G'day guys, Ian here, and today we're going to talk about what to do if your bearded dragon has a prolapse. Now guys, if you are new to this channel and you haven't already done so, please do us a favour, subscribe, turn on those post notifications, and welcome to Cookies Critters. So guys, like I mentioned in the introduction, today's video is about a bearded dragon with a prolapse. Now guys, this little girl just recently had a, uh, a clutch of infertile eggs and uh, in the process, she has had a very minor prolapse. Now, what a prolapse is, essentially it is the, uh, the internal organs now protruding out of the body. Now guys, whether it's a male or a female bearded dragon, both can have a, uh, a sexual reproductive system uh, prolapse as well as a gastrointestinal tract prolapse. So guys, obviously for a male during uh, during copulation, the hemipenes are averted and potentially it can take a while for those hemipenes to retract into the base of the tail. Now in the situation for this, this little girl was uh, pushing those little legs out and here we've ended up with a very, very small prolapse. Now guys, it is important that you do catch a prolapse as quick as you can because we need to start treating this ASAP. It is important we cannot let that prolapse dry out. And if we do, if we leave this overnight another day or so and, uh, and we don't act on this and we don't treat this prolapse, what is going to happen is that tissue is going to start to dry out and start becoming necrotic, which means the tissue will die and therefore will need to uh, be either amputated or uh, be resected and have the uh, the colon potentially sewn back onto the cloacal vent. Now guys, the uh, the way that we do treat a prolapsed uh, bearded dragon, uh, same with most reptiles, is we need to do a, uh, a very quick clean of that area to make sure, depending on the uh, the substrate that's being used, to make sure that we've cleaned the uh, the site of the prolapse, make sure that there is no, uh, no sand or, uh, or substrate still stuck because this area is going to be prone to infections now that it is protruding outside of the body. So the next step is, okay, we've just cleaned the, uh, the site of the prolapse. We do need to put the bearded dragon into a lukewarm bath. And so I've got a, uh, a bath here and I'm just gonna tilt the camera and we're gonna do all this at bench level. Okay, so popping our little beardy into the uh, lukewarm bath. Just making sure all it needs to be is just above the cloacal vent. Doesn't need to be too full. Now, the next stage is to get some raw sugar or even just plain table sugar. And we need to create a, uh, a really sugary solution inside this bath. And uh, a way we can do that is have some hot water in a separate bowl. Just moving this one across. Tip our sugar into the uh, into the hot water. We need to make sure that this sugar is uh, completely diluted before we add it to the uh, to the bearded dragon's bath. So, guys, what we're creating here is what's called a hypertonic solution. Now, what that means is hyper being high. It is a high concentration solution, higher than the uh, concentration of the prolapsed organ. Okay, so before I tip this solution in, I'm just gonna pull this little girl out, make her a bit more comfortable. Pop the sugar solution in. Hey guys, so we need to leave our bearded dragon here for the next 10 to 15 minutes. And what's happening is while she's in the hypertonic solution, the high concentration fluid is counteracting the low concentration fluid within the, uh, the prolapsed organ. And we are drawing out the extra fluid, therefore that, uh, that swelling in the organ. Now, hopefully by doing this, she will be able to uh, retract the prolapsed organ all by herself and she won't require any surgical intervention. Okay guys, so while your bearded dragon is in the bath, while they're soaking, uh, take this opportunity to strip out their enclosure. If they're on a sand or a loose substrate, pull out any loose substrate and just lay down 
some paper towel or some newspaper. Guys, you do not want to have a dragon that has a prolapse walking back through sand because once again, I talked about it earlier, the risk of infection in that area is so high. Obviously, we have an organ which is blood rich. We need to keep that organ clean um, while we're waiting for veterinary treatment. So guys, uh, I'm gonna take this opportunity now before we go into the next procedure. Uh, if you found this content useful, please do hit that like button. It helps us continue what we are doing. We are trying to uh, educate as many people when it comes to bearded dragons. So please do hit that like button. If you haven't already done so, subscribe, turn on those post notifications, and here we go, next step. Okay guys, so while Sub-Zero is soaking away in her little bath here, we're gonna take this opportunity to explain what are the main causes of a cloacal prolapse in a reptile. Now, starting at the top, uh, it's things like a uh, gastrointestinal impaction. So whether that's a substrate impaction or whether it's a food impaction. Now guys, obviously things like coarse bark and rocks and stuff like that will easily cause an impaction. Uh, and if you have a sand impaction, then you've either got an underlying health issue or you haven't had the right husbandry. Whether your enclosure wasn't clean enough, whether you didn't have the right UVB or whether you didn't have a high enough basking point, but your temperatures were wrong and your, uh, your dragon now has a sand impaction. If it is a food impaction, it could be a, a dietary imbalance. Maybe there's uh, not enough fiber and there's too many bugs. Maybe the food items are too big. Maybe you're, uh, you're feeding too many mealworms and the, uh, and the exo, the husk on that mealworm is creating an impaction. Whether the dragon is dehydrated uh, and therefore it can't actually digest uh, the, the food in its belly. Whether or not you haven't got the, uh, the correct basking temperature for the dragon to digest that food and you're creating a, uh, a constipation, that impaction. So guys, the reason why it is important to know what is causing a prolapse is so we can correct it so it doesn't happen in the future. Things like uh, intestinal parasites. Guys, you're gonna need to get your bearded dragon down to a vet, have a, uh, a fecal examination done, check for parasites. If the dragon has parasites, you will need antibiotics to prevent this in the future. Um, what else? Okay, so we talked about it before, dehydration. Obviously, if your dragon is dehydrated, then we need to correct that by daily misting our bearded dragon and giving them adequate water to prevent them from being dehydrated, therefore becoming constipated. And uh, guys, finally, in the situation of this little girl, yes, it was a, uh, a breeding issue. Now, even though they were infertile eggs and she's never actually mated, uh, we still put egg binding and uh, an egg laying causing uh, prolapses in that breeding category. Now, this can happen to young and immature females and it can also happen to females that have never been mated and they are laying infertile eggs. Obviously, the, uh, the, the shell structure of an infertile egg is a lot softer, has a lot less calcium, therefore it's a lot harder to push out and uh, can cause things like egg binding and uh, can cause more straining to, uh, to push the eggs out, therefore a, uh, a cloacal prolapse. Now, the other side to breeding is you have your, uh, your male and he's very aggressively mating the female and he's unrelenting. And that physical trauma of the, uh, the male mating the female can be enough to cause a, uh, a reproductive prolapse, not just a, a gastrointestinal prolapse, and on the, uh, the gender flip side to this, for your males, your males can actually prolapse their hemipenes and not be able to retract them. And in this situation, obviously the male has finished doing his job, he's, uh, he's, he's copulated and the, uh, the female has been inseminated and now his hemipenes are just left dragging on the sand, picking up all that debris, all that bacteria. Guys, you need to be super vigilant when it comes to breeding your bearded dragons that uh, you make sure that things like this don't happen and if they do, that you're all over it so that way you can treat immediately. Hey guys, uh, so it's been about 15 minutes now and I've just taken a little Sub-Zero out of the bath and uh, just looking at the prolapse, uh, it's gone down, the inflammation's gone down ever so slightly. Now, the, uh, the main thing to, to pay attention to is that the tissue is, uh, is very bright and vibrant red. Now, that's a good thing. 
the, uh, the bright red tissue means that there's no necrosis. None of that tissue is drying out and dying. So the next step is we need to make a, uh, a sugar paste, similar to the sugar solution that we did, but obviously this needs to be a paste and not a liquid. So therefore, when you get your sugar and you, uh, you're applying water to, to mix your solution, use only a couple of drops, a couple of drops at a time until you get the right consistency and it just needs to be a sticky paste, if I can get this to, all right, just a sticky paste. So guys, uh, alternatives to using the sugar paste, you can use things like Vaseline and water-based lubricants like KY gel. So guys, the uh, the idea and the uh, the method behind the sugar paste is to, we apply it to the cloacal vent and the, the, the prolapsed organ itself and the sugar solution, once again, uh, being a high concentration will continue to draw out any excess fluid and reducing the inflammation. Now, things like Vaseline and KY gel, uh, they are solely going to uh, lubricate and insulate the, uh, the membrane to prevent it from drying out while you are organizing a visit to your vet. Guys, treat this as an emergency. You need to get your bearded dragon and insist that you, uh, that you get seen by a veterinarian as soon as possible. Okay, so moving on, we have the, uh, we've got the paste here. We're gonna apply it to her vent and uh, let that sit for uh, about five to 10 minutes. Five minutes later. Actually, there you go. The, uh, the prolapse has actually fully retracted. And so guys, like I mentioned earlier, it is important that you get your bearded dragon down to the vet. Um, while you're transporting the bearded dragon, if you do have a damp cloth and you do wrap the, uh, the cloaca with a damp cloth, um, if you haven't got things like KY gel or Vaseline, then that will also insulate the, uh, the prolapsed organ from drying out. Now, your reptile veterinarian is potentially gonna do the same treatment. Soak the organ, let it try and uh, you know, reduce the inflammation and the swelling naturally. And then if the, uh, if the organ hasn't retracted by itself, they will manually uh, insert the, uh, the prolapsed organ. I never recommend doing this treatment at home unless you are experienced with this procedure. Regardless of whether or not the, uh, the, the bearded dragon has uh, retracted its prolapse by itself, whether the uh, reptile veterinarian has manually inserted it or whether they've gone down the surgical line, your bearded dragon is going to need a few sutures across the cloaca to uh, increase the tone and the, uh, the, uh, the resistance of the, of the cloaca so that way the prolapse won't happen again. Okay guys, I am gonna hammer this point a little bit more and it is so important to understand the, uh, the reasons what causes a prolapse because obviously if your bearded dragon has a intestinal uh, impaction, whether that's a, a substrate impaction or a food impaction and the reptile veterinarian throws a few sutures in the cloacal vent to, uh, to tighten everything up, obviously the, uh, the issue is the bearded dragon is not going to be able to pass whatever is impacted. So things like uh, uh, enemas and laxatives and stool softeners will be required to, uh, to assist your dragon to pass whatever is, uh, is blocking their intestinal tract. Okay guys, so that is how you treat a prolapse in a reptile. Now guys, if you did find this video helpful, if you found it informative, please do hit that like button. If you haven't already done so, subscribe and turn on those post notifications. That way you won't miss a coming video. Guys, if you've had something similar to your little beardy, we would love to hear about it. Please let us know by dropping it down in the comment section below. And as always guys, if you've got them, keep your beard treated and your beauty's hated. <laughs>